going to begin by asking um, about the title Dolly Mixtures and where that's come from and the meaning behind it. Well, it's a mixture of dollies that I talk to, so I suppose I just realised that that's what they... Uh, yeah. They weren't my favourite sweets, but I didn't mind them. <laughs> what was your favourite sweet? My favourite sweet. I like those space uh, ships, uh, flying saucers with the sherbet in the middle. Yeah. I like the stuff that used to pop on your tongue. I don't know if they've outmoded that since I was a kid. Popping candy. Space dust. Oh, space dust. Space dust. There's fearsome stuff, yeah. exhilarating stuff. <laughs> and uh, about the show, mm. um, I was just wondering about your your various sort of characters that you have, and if they, whether they're based on people you know or sort of slight traits of of their personality are based on anyone you know. Well, I mean, mainly they're all based on me, but then there are other things that filter in. I mean, I did have a builder at that time who who was like quite sort of the kind of horny character. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right thing to say. But um, so I sort of put, that, you know, I exaggerated that and put that into puppet form. And there's a lot of talk uh, still about whether we get a dog. And we nearly got one and, and didn't. But uh, that that's also in the show, a dog. So is there a particular theme that sort of runs the way way through this this show? Um, well, it was just my current life experience is really what I put into it rather than anything that's happening in the world. It was an internal time um, that went into it. A theme. A sort of chaos, but it's held together with kind of going through the seven stages of man, isn't it? It was, it was from birth to death. Birth being the monkey. I boogied with it a bit. But the, the characters sort of get older throughout the show, I think. Yeah. And did you always want to be an entertainer? Um, yeah, I did. I mean, I just did not know that... that, that the, <laughs> I didn't know that I wasn't the right personality type to go into it, probably. I mean, as a kid, I remember that I was... Uh, I sang in a silver sequin boob tube and silver trousers. I sang in assembly a song from my father's musical, my father's in a musical in the West End. And I loved it. I went to see it 21 times. And I, I put the whole school through that. I mean, dancing and singing this. I, I, I would just never do that now. I think since I find it undignified, the, the, the wish to perform. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you almost feel more comfortable when sort of embodying these these puppets and sort of I mean when for example you're talking to the audience as some participation yeah do you feel, find it easier to be funny off the cuff when in character? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I mean it's funny. It's easier to be funny when you have a monkey on your hand because he's <laughs> going to say like weird monkey things. Oh, definitely, um, but. Uh, and you can post rationalize the way your brain works. I mean, it's almost like slowing it down. Because you realise I've had that thought, but I don't want to live by that one. So it's coming out here, and you're thinking, "Wait, I have to correct that." And then you have an, it, it kind of slows down your thinking and compartmentalises it. So that's quite interesting. Otherwise, when you're just busy being you all the time, it's so boring, and it all sounds very one note. You mentioned uh, <clears throat> your father before. Now I, I interviewed Rafe Spawn here recently, who, of course, his dad was also. He's oh, also yeah. an actor. Um, and he was saying that having a sort of parent who does a lot of sort of acting involved in the industry from a young age gave him a lot of kind of creative freedom. Did you feel the same way sort of growing up in a house where your, your dad was sort of such a successful actor? Yeah, the house is a, a fantastic house for a child to grow up in, I think. I mean, they would have rehearsals in the house and, you know, I want to meet Hugh Grant when I really fancied him as a 13-year-old. I mean, there were there was some certain perks and making dinner for Arthur Miller, that was a big mistake because it was very stressful. But there were pe <laughs> amazing people in the house and, yeah, fun times. And I, it was, I suppose, a creative space to grow up in. Yeah. And uh, going back to the, the sort of the audience participation in your show, is because obviously when you're, when you're doing a, a long tour, it can, I imagine doing a sort of similar routine every night can get quite same for yourself, not obviously for the audience because it's different for them. Uh, but is that side to it the more sort of fresh side that you sort of look forward to because it kind of keeps it a yeah. bit unique every night, I guess? Absolutely. Well, I mean, any any part of it can go off course because I kind of allow that to happen and if thoughts occur, I let the puppets say them. But um, yeah, it's wonderful using people from the audience because it's always slightly different compared to who you've got on it so it's a chemistry that you're not expecting you don't know what it is so I love that is it quite nerve-wracking though because obviously mm. you're leaving it open to improvisation it's quite nerve-wracking if you think ahead too far 
But I think for as long as you're just uh, happy with what you've got and you're not trying to change it or force it somewhere and you're just sort of open to where this could go, well, that's easier said than done. But on the nights that works, it's very relaxing, actually. And one thing I find sort of quite remarkable about your show is the kind of effortless uh, way you kind of move between your own voice and the voice of the character. Mm. Uh, when you're asked a, a question by an audience member, do you ever answer in sort of the wrong voice and then just sort of yeah. go with it? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I do because the the technique to me, I suppose, is the least interesting element of it. it whether my lips are moving or whether the puppet speaking in the right voice. I mean, it's rare that I make a mistake, but it really doesn't matter when I do. I mean, that's funny and it's fine. And no, nobody believes that it's a real monkey in the first place, so we're safe. Yeah. And as for the sort of touring, I mean, it must be such a, a tiring experience, but quite an exhilarating one as well, I imagine, mm. to play in front of people sort of every night for a couple of months. Yeah. If that. Yeah. And it was hor horrific to, to be at the beginning of those months and look at the diary and think, I'm not going to live through that. It was like exams or something. But uh, as uh, yeah, each place I went to, I really enjoyed. I loved it, in fact. Have you got a favourite uh, place that you performed? Well, Leeds was my favourite, and that's why we set the DVD there, because it's, a, it's such a lovely old-fashioned chocolate box type theatre and it's got ha it's such a rich history of variety with Laurel and Hardley having been there and Charlie Chapman and I mean yeah variety acts have, have all played there so it was fun to go. And do you, do you almost get more nervous the night that you know the DVD's being filmed knowing that this is the this is there for posterity now? Yeah because you're thinking oh please don't let it be like the one I did in Hull and please let it be there. <laughs> yeah. Actually I didn't go to Hull that's a bad example but yeah and it was uh, it was a good one I was so relieved yeah. I was so relieved because you're putting two years of shows into this one night it has to go well it's a bit like the Olympics but it was a good one yeah, yeah. people train for so long and then they've got three I, minutes to do yeah. their yeah oh I know it's, I don't think it's quite as hard as that but yeah and because uh, I was wondering because you've got two kids I was wondering mm. about the whole is it quite tough to sort of tour and, and be a, a mother at the same time that must it must pose some difficulties I guess it's very t uh, tough but we only I only took gigs Thursday to Sunday and I took the kids with me on the Saturday and uh, Thursday I'd commute and then we'd go away for the weekend sometimes they, everyone would come with me so that's sort of how we did it and if it was close, I would go there and back on my own. But it's, yeah, it is. And have they seen parts of your show yet? Or what age will they be allowed the to sit The three-year-old hasn't seen any of it. <laughs> I mean, he wouldn't sit still. He'd walk straight onto the stage and pull me off <laughs> by the hand. But uh, the the ten-year-old came a, a lot of times. And I hope, I think he enjoyed it, yeah. yeah. Sorry, let me interrupt you. Because what I've just said is that my ten-year-old came. This DVD is not for ten-year-olds. <laughs> Mine is different. <laughs> Um, he's, he's used to it and he doesn't use those words at school oh. so it's actually a 15 rated uh, thing yeah oh, it's definitely worth putting that out yeah um, yeah and I was just wondering if you think this is quite a good time for for comedians at the moment because I suppose there's, it appears anyway from the outside that there's more opportunities on the on the television than there ever has been yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry that made, made me go blank I think we're very lucky in, in well I mean yeah I think we're very lucky here in this country because there are so many comedy clubs and comedy is such a rich industry. I don't think there's anywhere with as much live comedy on in the world as here. Like even in New York, probably couldn't compete with the London scene. And who's your, your comedy inspiration? Well, there are, there are, there's more than one. But I'm very addicted to Louis C.K. at the moment and watch it. I've only got one episode that I haven't seen. I don't want to watch it because then there'll be nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep that for a few years. Yeah. Watch it one day. But it, uh, that's old news, and I was late to the party with that. I mean, people, comedians all love him. Um, yeah, but that's the one at the moment. Uh, so my final question is, obviously, because I'm here for, on behalf of predominantly a film site, I was wondering what's your, your favourite comedy movie of all time? I probably would say Spinal Tap because... I had to learn that whole film off by heart, whether I wanted to or not, because of the amount of times I watched it. And, and then I got to work with Christopher Guest, and that was a very com lovely completion of a dream for childhood dream. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from The Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys!